Given the task to design a circuit, we have to go through a number of steps. We have to identify the problem that we are given. Then we have to do some sort of minimization, and the minimization might be for the purpose of cost minimization or to minimize the amount of chips for the just to minimize the surface of the uh, implementation that we want to have. So let's let's take an example problem. In this case here, the question I've given is that we have four push buttons, and we'll just denote these A, B, C, and D. And we want the situation to arise where an LED lights when the following conditions occur. So the first condition is that if any of the three buttons are pressed at the same time, so if the first three buttons are pressed, A, B, C, or if the first button is pressed with the last two, A, C, D, or A, B, D, or so on. There's, there's a several other combinations of that, of, of that condition. Another condition is that the four buttons are pressed together. So if A, B, C, and D are pressed at the same time, then, some, then the LED lights. Or, in the last case, if the outermost buttons, so the first and last button is pressed, or the innermost buttons are pressed at the same time, so if the middle two buttons are pressed, or if the, last, the outermost buttons are pressed, then we want the LED to light. So we're given here as a, as a fairly complex uh, problem to solve if you, if you haven't seen any sort of minimization before. Um, we need to use AND and OR gates to do the initial implementation and whatever other gates, inverters if we needed them, um, to do our initial implementation. So it helps to have a formalized method for doing this. We're going to use kernel maps. So initially the first thing we have to identify is um, is we have to identify how many states. Well, there's four buttons. That means that there are, there are two to the power of uh, uh, four combinations, uh, which is uh, 16 combinations. So we have to look at our circuit and evaluate how it should behave for all 16 of these combinations. And to do this, we're going to, we're going to create a, a truth table. Okay, so here's our truth table. And you can see here I've just got 16, I've got 16 rows built in and we can, we can, we set up the number of columns that, that, that we, we, um, we, we want. So in this case here, um, we've set up that we want our four columns, uh, our inputs, and we'll just call F our output. So F denotes whether the LED is lit and A, B, C and D are the four buttons that we, we want to, uh, we want to use. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we get all the combinations of A, B, C, and D. And there's a very simple trick for this. Uh, we simply go down the column so uh, with zeros. So if we do eight zeros, and then we do eight ones, and then in the next case, in the case of B, we do half of what we did the last time. So four zeros, and four ones, and then four zeros, and four ones. Similarly for C, two zeros, two ones, we just change the, the, the frequency, I suppose, every, every uh, column. And finally for D, we should end up alternating between each, each uh, state. So now if we look at the, the table that's been populated, we have our inputs, and you can see that no two rows are the same. They all have a different combination. And, it's a very handy way to go, go through, to set out the states because you can see this is zero, if you know your number systems, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, down to, down to 15. 1, 1, 1, 1 represents, is a binary representation of 15. So this represents 0 to 15, so our 16 states are captured here. So we have to identify what the output should be in each one of these cases. So again, the output should be high if if all four uh, buttons are pressed at the same time, so that's that condition checked off. The output should be high if the outer buttons, so if A and D are pressed at the same time, but not B and C. So if we see, if we look for that state, we, we, we see that uh, um, it should be here. So here we go. We see the A and D are pressed, but not B and C. And if the two middle ones are pressed, but not the two outer ones are pressed, and that's that state should be lit. 
And finally, if any three buttons are pressed at the same time, the LED should light. So we're looking here for any of the rows where there's three uh, buttons pressed at the same time. So here's the first one. Um, here's another one. Keep on down. Here's another one. And finally, here's another one. And then the remainder of the state, the LED should be off in the remainder of the cases. So that indicates now, that's our, our populated truth table, and that indicates the states um, that should occur for all possible combinations of the button inputs. The next thing we want to do is to create a Carnot map. And a Carnot map is a tool that we're going to use to minimize, uh, in a formal way, we're going to minimize the logic required for this particular implementation. If you were to implement it using the 16 states, we'd need quite a number of AND and OR gates. But it's possible to minimize this circuit down to a, to a smaller version and still get an equivalent circuit where the same inputs A, B, C, and D provide an equivalent output F to what we have in our truth table. So to draw a Karna map, we create a table like this. It's, it's, it identifies the 16 cells, and we are going to just label our, label our different rows and label our columns. So, we call this A, B, C, D, where we put the A, B states down on the, um, the column and we put the C, D states across the row. Now, for A, B, C, D states, uh, we have to identify the different, the different combinations again. Um, the first row identifies all the, when A and B are 0, 0, uh, 0, 1. And this is very important with Carnot maps you know, the, the temptation would be to do this, 1, 0, 1, 1. And if you were to do that, well, then your Carnot map would not work. It's very important that you only make a transition of one variable when you're moving from one cell to the next. So as a result, you can only change. In this case here, you can see that A is changing from 0 to 1 and B is changing from 1 to 0. That's two state changes on the transition from one cell. So you're not allowed to do that. And if you do that, the Carnot map system does not work at all. So to fix this, we change this to 1, 1, in which case we get um, only a transition from A to is changed from 0 to 1, and B is staying at 1, so there's no transition there. And finally, 1, 0 to cover all the possible combinations. B is changing from 1 to 0, and A is staying the same. So that gives us a, a, a transition across the different rows where only once only one state changes at a time, either A or B. We do the same for C, D, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now what we want to do is populate the cells. So we want to look down our table and see, well, if A, B is 0, 0, and C, D are 0, 0, well, what is the output? F is, is what we fill in the box here. So we see 0, 0, 0, 0. That gives us an output of F of 0. We do the same, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1 is an output of 0, it gives us an output of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, um, you can see here it gives us an output of 0, and, and so on. So we continue to fill in, we continue to fill in the truth table, I'm sorry, in the, in the Carnot map. Okay. okay, so when we're finished, our, truth, our Carnot map looks like this. We've got all of our, our F states listed, and uh, we've populated. So just as a check, we can see we've 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 outputs with a value of 1 here. And then in our Carnot map, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 outputs with a value of 1 in this particular case. 